Well, today's the day. It's been very exciting because my first TT Loco has arrived. I've been looking forward to this ever since I pre-ordered it. Uh, it's not the train set I would have gone for. There's a HST one coming, which I would have preferred, but I'm too impatient to wait for that. So I've ordered this. I have plans to repaint this. So let's see what it's like. So, uh, I could bore you by showing you the box, talking about the packaging, but let's face it, no one ever wants to see a box opening in a review. You want to see what's inside. So let's get it open. Very tightly packed. There we are then, all sustainable packaging by the looks of things. Card covering the top, and there's the contents inside. So we have a loco, three coaches, there's two uh, composites, and a brake uh, track, more track with points, and a power track controller, plug, a little buffer stop, a re-railer, and a bag of detailed parts for the A4. All very nice. And then what's underneath? Uh, just some instructions for the loco. So it doesn't look like you get a track mat in these train sets. That doesn't matter because I wasn't going to do a track mat anyway. So, first things first, let's look at the exciting thing. Let's take a look at the loco. So we are into the loco boxed up and sadly I can already see that a part has come loose in shipment. So hopefully that can be put back on. Let's take it out and have a look. So what is this part that's come off? Uh, I'm not massively familiar with A4s. More of a, a modern image modeler. Um, there's nothing shouting out at me of where this has come off. I'll look that out later. Or oh, send it back, one or the other. Right then. The Loco. It does look very smart. That is really nice. So it's William Whitelaw, 60004 uh, in the late BR. And it's good to see that yeah, they have indeed corrected the problems with the wheels. Of having the, uh, the, uh, the, the cow balance opposite the crank. That's all nice. Brake details already on there. Turn this bad boy around. Let's have a look at the other side. Get back into view. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna see a few close up shots. That is a really nice model. It really is excellent detail. But then I suppose it needs to be if. Um, you know, all we want to go into this emerging new market of TT and, and try and entice people from Engage and OO. It really has got to be top of its game. So it, it's looking good. To say, I'm not an expert on A4, so I wouldn't be able to spot any glaringly obvious errors. Uh, but to my eye, it's looking all right. Now, I tell a lie, I've just looked over the model and I've seen something that's slightly alarming, and that is uh, here. This is protruding like a mudder. That is, uh, that doesn't look very good. That looks very bent. Hmm. That's very bent. Well, that's very disappointing to see. Hmm. This might be a send back to the shop jobby. Let's see if it runs. 
you know, the more I look at this, the more uh, disappointed I'm, I'm getting, really. It's, uh, I don't know if you can see, but there's definitely been the uh, classic over-oiling in the factory. Uh, um, I've noticed on many a Hornby model. And it's all over the smoke box there. Um, and I'm never able to clean this stuff off. I've tried all sorts to try and get it off. You always get a machine left afterwards. So, it's a bit of a downside. You can see inside the cab. It's a nice bit of detail in there. I mean, I'll... there are positives here. It's just there's just a few negatives that always seems to be uh, lack of quality control. You always hear about these things. I don't often buy many Hornby products because I say I'm more more of a modern image, but I do like 1990s, and that's more of a Backman and nowadays a Cura scale sort of focus Hornby. Have a few items in that range, but they're obviously more steam. And this side's looking fine, it's just that other side, but I say it's turned up with a broken piece, and that, that uh, valve gear being damaged and sticking out that doesn't look very promising. And I say it's got the oil all over the smoke box front. Now, what I was planning to do with this model was um, if I can get hold of some nameplates, I know some companies will be looking into doing it because so I want to get Sir Nigel Gresley. And I intend to paint this in wartime black as Sir Nigel Gosey has been running around sort of in the last year. So I intend to do a really modern image layout this time, you know, 60, 60s, etc. And I thought this logo would be quite good for a rail tour. So we shall see. Okay, I've put the uh, logo on a bit of test track. Uh, I wanted to do the full loop, but um, it is definitely larger than two feet for a loop, which I think is in N-gauge, you can get a first radius loop within two feet. So you're probably looking about three feet wide for this curved track. Um, comes in these half curves, which is probably a bit more handy if you're planning to use this track and you wanna, you know, come up with other ideas or designs in the future. That sort of opens up your options a bit more. Um, and there's quite a few straights in there as well, so it's nice. It's always nice to have a nice little long straight run. I say in a set of points. Uh, so that's the track. We'll talk a bit more about the track uh, later. Let's uh, test this low coat and see if this little bend here is going to cause me any issues and if I need to contact Hornby and send this back. So. Looking okay so far. Well, it's running, so that's a positive. Um, hopefully I can just bend that little bit back and straighten it out and work out where that other little piece goes. And um, <clears throat> we'll say no more. It, you know, I, I want to be fair to Hornby. Um, I don't want to start slagging them off and saying, oh, this is rubbish, this is rubbish, look at this, I bought this for this. You know, these things happen. This isn't the first model I've ever bought that something has been rattling around the box. And that happens with everyone you buy from. Um, and, and the same with, especially when it comes to valve gears and that. As I say, if you've watched my 009, you'll know that my Baldwin has the exact same problem with the valve gear. It's got bent at some point in its life. And uh, I believe that happened when the shop I bought it from removed the DCC chip. And that's always a bit of a bugger to run. So, but this runs very nicely. I mean, this controller's not the best controller in the world. It's one of Hornby's sort of basic ones. An improved look onto the last ones. There's a high-low button on the back as well. I'm not sure what that's about. Have to look into that. But it's definitely an improved controller compared to what you get in the other train sets. So what I have on my boys' layout, which you see if you watch those videos, um, he has the older Hornby controller. Um, and this one's got an uncontrolled 14 uh, volt DC output on it, so that can uh, control your accessory. So that's good. That'll be quite useful. Uh, as I said, there's high low. I have to read the instruction manual to see what that's about. I know that's not the to do thing when you're a man to read instruction manuals, but I'll give it a go. But do you know what? This loco runs really nicely. As I say, it's 
So a little bit of, well, hopefully I can clean it up, but I intend to repaint this logo anyway. As I said, I'm gonna try and turn it into Sir Nigel Gresley. Bit of a noise from the motor there. It is a bit noisy, not too distracting. I don't know, maybe that's the controller as well. Maybe I'll try a, um, try my Gauge Master controller. Maybe we'll get a better result. Maybe that's something I need to try. Might set that up in a moment and uh, we'll have a little play with that. So, it does run really nice. I know I'm just going backwards and forwards. Hopefully I can set a loop up and we can watch it go around. But, um, yeah. Say this, it's, it's, it's those little flaws, but they're not the end of the world. Um, you know, it was a bit disappointing to see it first, but now that I've got it running, I'm feeling happy with it again. Let's have a look at the coaches. All right, well, that's the loco. Um, highs and lows with it, really. Uh, but overall, I'm happy with it. I think it's a really nice model. Um, so I'm not an expert at 84, so I couldn't tell you if the uh, front end is at the wrong angle. It looks it looks pretty good to me. Um, you know, you'd, you'd need proper LNER expert really if you want a proper model review on that. But overall, looks good. The say a few little niggles there, but nothing I don't think I could sort. So coaches. So three coaches in the set, which is nice, especially these days when you look at OO gauge sets and you only get two coaches uh, to try and keep costs down. So this is this is a plus point really. Um, so they're all Mark ones in maroon, uh, Eastern Region allocated with their E's next to the stock number. So you get a brake coach. Corridor coach. First class at this end, and another corridor coach with first class at this end. Are they the same running numbers? I assume they are the same coach. No, so it's uh, Echo 15480 and Echo 15488. It's all good. Overall, they look very nice. They do look very, very nice. I, I saw the engineering examples uh, in Galen. And they were very impressive. Really nice sort of level of detail. And I just really do like this size. I've always admired the three millimeter layouts that you see at exhibitions. And they just, I don't know, it just feels so right. Um, I mean, I really do hope that this scale takes off because um, there's a lot of things on my wish list. And I know Simon Kerner says you can email him, um, you know, and tell him what you want, but, um, You'd have to take about a week out of his diary for what I want. Um, but I digress. Let's have a closer look at the coaches. So let's have a little uh, closer look at the coaches then. Um, not used to these couplings. <laughs> Do you uncouple them? They are slightly different to what was shown at the... There we are. So they, when I went to Gaiden and looked at the samples, the couplings didn't have this little hook on them. I don't recall them being on there, so they just sort of slotted together. But got this additional hook. Makes them a bit tricky to take apart sometimes. There we are. So, as you can see, they are really nicely detailed you've got like the little first class symbols on the windows there the lining is absolutely beautiful um highly detailed inside you can see all the seating the writing is legible there no smoking signs there all legible all can be read really really nice i think it's really smart i'm not an expert on mark one so I wouldn't, I can't see anything glaring the obvious, shall I say. Uh, I'm sure a Mark 1 expert might be able to spot the little faux pas with these coaches, but um, as far as I can tell, 
they look spot on to me. They're absolutely wonderful. And what I wanted to do was sort of give a comparison as well to OO gauge, give people a rough idea of the size difference. So there is an OO gauge coach, that's a TT gauge coach. I'm gonna get them in shots so you can actually see them. So there's the OO gauge coach, there's a TT gauge coach. Um, I did want to do N gauge for comparison, but I have only American N gauge. American rolling stock being larger than British outline rolling stock. And so in comparison, they are roughly the same size. And so you can see what my attraction to N gauge, American N gauge was, was that because it was slightly bigger, it was slightly easier to model with. Um, I always found, I have dabbled with British N gauge, but always found it just a little bit too small. Um, and especially as my eyesight has deteriorated, I'm pretty certain these glasses these days. Uh, TT does seem the more viable option. I mean, that's the only UK N-Gage I could find that I have. I stole the chassis for something else. So it's not a great comparison because it's got no wheels, but I mean, the wheels will hold it roughly about there. So you get a rough idea of the different sizes, N-Gage, TT, OO. So that fits nicely in the middle. That is, to me, it's always been the right size scale. Um, and, you know, the problems I've always had with OO gauges. I want to do nice big main nines with full length HSTs. And a full length HST in OO, you're looking at around nine feet of just straight track for that HST. So that means nine feet for the HST, nine feet for the station, nine feet for the storage yard. It all starts adding up. Um, whereas TT, I think you're roughly looking at about five and a half feet off the top of my head. I did work it out, and then N gauge. Uh, it's about just over four and a half feet for a full length HST, so it's a hell of a difference. Um, and that's why I'm really, really keen for this to be successful. So those are the coaches. Um, wonderfully modelled and absolutely great. They look really nice. Let's have a look at the track. One more thought before I go on to look at the track is obviously these coaches are rolling stock, so I should probably see how good they are rolling. I've got all three on. Very nice on the straight. Now I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a scraping noise. When they go on the curb. a little bit looking to that try and work out what that is we've got the coach on the track and you can see you push it and when it gets to the curb it comes to a stand it doesn't roll anymore there's definitely some friction there and then it comes out of it again so it's just sort of in the transition between the straight and the curve you can hear that scraping noise and i suspect that that is the wheels are just catching on the frame Bit of resistance, and especially push the coach down. That's definitely a lot worse. I mean, it's not too bad. It goes, but obviously they just catch just a little bit there. Right. So we've talked about the loco. I'm happy with it. Ups and downs, as I say. Coaches. I'm very happy with the coaches. They do seem to uh, catch a little when they go around the curve. Um, but that's really, I think, only a problem if you're going to model with set track stuff. I think if you're going to start branching out into bigger layouts, so you probably are going to have more uh, larger sweeping curves. And I don't think that's going to be a problem there at all. So, and I say, it's just a little bit of friction on the first part of the curve when it goes right into it. doesn't seem to be a problem. So... It's a minor niggle. Now I've talked about the controller. There's not much to talk about there. It's just, it's a newer version of the Hornby's controller. As I say, there's a 14 volt DC output there for uncontrolled. So that's like lights, point motors, stuff like that. It's high, low button. Still have no idea what that does. I'll have to read up on that. 
And, and then obviously you've got your power cable comes in and the power comes out. So you pull the switch back and forwards and the control knob. It's a very basic box standard controller. It's not going to be the best in the world. It came in a train set. It's never going to be brilliant. So track. Briefly uh, talk about track. And I immediately made many assumptions and mistakes when talking about this track. So I'm going to talk about it in a little more detail. And there's a few interesting things here that I think people might find useful. So, first things first, the curves. Now, when I talked about these earlier, I said these were half curves because I assumed there were 16 in the box and then you put them all together and you get your loop. However, I have counted them and there's actually 12. So, traditionally, in a Hornby Dolo train set, you will get these curves. This is the R60, I believe, 9. Yeah, R609, third radius curve. And you'll get eight of these in a Hornby Double O train set. Uh, so two of them will give you a quarter turn, four will give you a half turn, eight will give you the full circle. So I had made that assumption for this, and it was only when I was looking through the catalogue, just double checking things, that I saw that they actually have a different product, which is called the half curve. I'll find the page, which I've marked up. So we are, they've got various half curves here. Now, as I say, there are 12 of these in here, which means you actually need six to do a half turn. And also means that if you wanted to do a quarter turn, like lots of people tend to do when building layouts, particularly when you expand and you sort of use your set track to hide corners for tunnel mouse to get into fiddle yards, you're actually going to need two of these and one of these half turns that I've just showed you in the catalogue to make that 45 degree turn. So that is something to bear in mind. They have changed the geometry of the track uh, in these train sets uh, for better or for worse, I couldn't say. Um, whenever I've used any of my son's toys that go out of the realms of just using 45 degrees, uh, particularly Thomas Track Master Track, if any parents have tried building uh, layouts for them on the floor, I, just, I can't stand them. They also use the same system of six curves and you start trying to get things to come to connect together and it's just an absolute nightmare. So. I don't know if that'll be the same experience, but bearing in mind it's geometry and maths, I'd imagine you're going to walk into the same sort of problems if you don't buy some of these half curves, depending on what your plans are. So that is something really quite important, I think, to keep in mind there. Um, you get a set of points. They are a... How are we the... Uh, there we are, TT. 8008. Uh, I think they are the only points in the range at the moment, and they're just described as a left hand point of 15 degrees. So, again, if usually with Hornby double O, the set track point would be at the same curved angle to the track. Now, this is a third radius curve, and I'll come back onto that in a minute. So if you compare that to that, you can see that the angle of the curve is a lot more generous than third. So this is another piece of track that came with the set, and that is TT8007, which is described as a six radius, 15 degree curve. Putting that over the point matches. So your Hornby points are six radius. Now, as I said, these curves, I'm just going to come back to them, are third radius. If you look in the catalogue, it might just be a misprint, but with both the Scotsman and the Easterner train sets, it's described as a second radius starter oval. Now, I don't know if that's going to cause issues if you start buying these extra expansion packs. I assume that is a mistake and that should be third. Um, so looking at it, this is the base oval, pack one, which the Scotsman and the Easterner, they both come with pack one uh, expansion set. So if you wanted to do this layout in the bottom of the catalogue here, 
uh, you need to then get track extension pack two to start moving on, which contains six 8004s. So TT8004 is a second radius curve. So that is a mistake in the catalog and obviously something to bear in mind if you thought that you've bought this and you've got second radius curves and you go out and buy third radius curves because then you're going to find that you've got probably way too many third radius. So there's a fair few differences there and assumptions not to be made in regards to track. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do was just compare the track in size so you get again a rough idea. So I've got a third radius N gauge curve about to the TT. You know, it's not quite fair because obviously this needs a half turn on top to compare it. And then that's our O gauge. So you can see the difference in size, how much space saving TT really is. Now the other thing is Hornby are not the only people to enter the UK TT gauge 120 market. Pico also entered and they have started with their own track range. And this is where there's something else to bear in mind. And if you've watched any of the TT Talk videos, I think Simon may have mentioned that these track gauges are indeed two different sizes. I don't know if you can see that. I'd have to go really close up on the camera and try and show you a comparison. In fact, it'd be better if I just show you the bases so if you look at the flat bottom there to the flat bottom there you can see that the pico is a lot finer and that's because pico is code 55 and i believe this is no i have no idea i can't remember i think it was code 80 but i'm not certain so they are not quite compatible yet you'll need a conversion track i'm sure pico will do at some point just like they do for their code 100 code 75 um, and the other one with Pico stuff, when I went and bought this, I was looking everywhere for TT gauge uh, fish plates or rail joiners. They are the same ones as Code 55 for N gauge. I wanted to do a Google search, I found that one out. But um, So if you're looking for them going, why haven't they got a TT? That's because you need the N gauge Code 55. So a little uh, facts there to bear in mind. And that's the track. I've talked eight minutes about track. Amazing. I thought I'd just brush through that. So we are then. That is the Horn BTT 120, the Easterner train set. Um, overall impressions. I really do like the size. Uh, a little disappointed with how the locos turn out when it's arrived. Got a little bit of damage to it. But I don't think it's any end of the world. I think it's all fixable. So I'm not going to kick off too much about that. The coaches, I think the coaches are really lovely. Obviously, that's that little problem with them just seem to just scrape the bottom of their frames when they go on the curves. Don't know if that's going to be a derailing problem or not. But that is the set. I'm going to try and find somewhere to set it up. And we'll run this around and have any fuel of running shots. So if you have enjoyed this video, then please click the like button if you want to see more, because I do intend to have a project of building a TT gauge layout. It will be a modern image. It will start off as a depot. I've already started scratch building, so there is work on the way. Then, you know, click that subscribe button. And hopefully I'll see you again sometime soon. Thanks for watching. Hey well then, testing the theory, tabletop. It just fits on the uh, kitchen table. Just, I'm a bit worried about how close it is to the edge really, but uh, hopefully things will be okay. I've wired up the gauge master controller and if you're on the loco, definitely a lot less noise there. So I think that just might be, maybe the controller, but you know, it's on the gauge master, that seems fine. So, I'm going to run this in, put some coaches behind it and have a little play.